All right, let's have a look inside this tuner here. So this is the uh, the AT500. I guess it must be pretty well rated. Um, it uses the same brass screws and uh, things like that. In the inside you can see what the paint was supposed to look like but you know after years of age and stuff and use they tend to not look so good anymore so we've got some massive ceramic Variable capacitors in here, which makes this a really nice tuner. Um, the design is kind of similar to what you would see in a lot of the 80s stuff. We've got a little bit of the pitting here, which is common for this kind of metal treatment when it gets exposed to moisture. The scheme here is very similar to what I found in my ICOM 761. Um, but you can see why this tuner will handle 500 watts. What's interesting though, the coil isn't that big. Um, but I, I guess it doesn't need to be. I guess the real issue with most of these tuners is really the capacitors. Uh, you know, the spacing too is critical. critical. Uh, uh, for arc over and things like that. These all look pretty good. Um, reminds me of a TS440 tuner, kind of a little bit. We had a, a relay over here. Um, so some of the issues to be concerned with here in this is the antenna connections in the back because um, it has like four connectors and they could be all set for different bands. I'm going to guess these are just the different bands and, um, so I don't know what these other bands are, but it looks like 28, maybe that says 28, 21. Um, so there's still a band over here that's not going to this one. So, um, these aren't being used. So this is why I wanted to open this up more than anything. I, I mean, I figured it worked just fine. So, uh, but, uh, what you would do, uh, uh, according to the manual is you would just put all your, your connectors that you wanted on, you know, whichever one you wanted. And so let me flip it around. So, antenna 1, antenna 2, antenna 3, antenna 4. And then your input is over here. And then you have the accessory control. And then the second one, so that you could daisy chain things and control um, more things with it. I would imagine um, that this would just go to the 2K hell. And then this could be used mobile. There's an AC or DC switch here. It uses a computer style power cord, which is nice. It uses a, a power connector. I don't know if it comes off. It looks like it should. Um, reminiscent to some of their really early two meter stuff. It's a Molex kind of connector. Um, there we go. So, I, I guess the idea was that you need this jumper on here for it to work. And then, this is just like their antenna connector, actually, I think. Um, or a computer one, I can't remember. Um, I don't have a, an older ICOM sitting here easy to look at, but... Um, anyway, this needs to be on here, I'm sure. It just jumpers the center two pins. And I'm going to guess that one of these plus one of the other ones would run this mobile. So, we'll leave that on there. 
but there's just been so many stickers on the back of here that, you know, they had like different configurations and I didn't really ask him how he had it set up. Uh, but I can see that, uh, one of the bands need to get moved. Um, they're using antenna number two, which isn't the most intuitive thing, but I think it's also because of the length of the jumpers in here, why it was done like, a. I really do like uh, the construction of this. This is really nice. I had no idea these things looked like this in the inside. Um, I'd seen them before at Hamfest, and I just never paid attention to them. And they could be used with any radio, but if you have the ICOM, the older style ICOM, it will follow the radio automatically for you. And the fact that this can handle 500 watts if you can get your hands on a 2KL... Uh, I mean, look at that it's very nicely made oh, you can see there's a sensing circuit here if it doesn't have any sort of um, SWR meter really there's a, a calibration thing here um, it's kind of tricky, but this is very well made. I mean, like, it's crazy. So, I'm, I'm looking down in here right now, and this looks like it says 18. So, we get 28, 21. 14, 7, 10, and I think this is 3.5. So, the only one that hasn't been moved is 17 meters. And, I mean, we could put this exactly back how it was factory. Um, but he's got this sticker on here for this, and, um, not seeing where 160 would be. Uh, but I, I would I would like everything to be on the same connector. Um, to get to this, I think maybe might uh, be a problem for the other part. Because I, I don't know that you can just take uh, this cover off the bottom. Oh, I guess you can. So... We'll probably have to come in here and you see all the screws are pretty boogered. That's because they used those brass screws again. And um, it seems like they would get boogered even if somebody didn't open a radio, you know. <coughs> but we just want to get this thing set up. I... I don't see any wires going anywhere else. So the one that I'm I'm not seeing is 160. And I'm wondering if this is it right here. I think it actually... I don't think it says 18. I think it says 1.8. Um, this, uh, this switch here... Is controlled by that motor that's pretty cool and you can see they have holes in the motor down there there's actually an optical sensor I, I'm not getting it on the camera because it, I can't seem to get it to move okay down here that's a, a photo sensor so how cool is that so this is really nice Yeah, I don't, I don't think that that yellow wire is what I think it is. And I, I think... Um, yeah, you can see it here. So, okay, so this is antenna connector number four. Right here. Um, so the way he's got this set up is he has um, all of everything on one connector and then 80 and 160 on the completely different one 
Um, that's cool. Uh, but... 80's not on there. So just 160. So he's probably changed this a few times. Um, this is kind of one of these things that you could get into trouble if somebody else got it and didn't know what was done to it. Um, so... I, I don't remember exactly what the manual said. Um, I'd have to look at it and see. We should probably do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Who knows? Somebody might come across this video and need help, you know. Um, the manual is nearby. I put it out of the way. We've got the 751A manual. And let me see here. Hmm. I definitely put it somewhere. Okay, so let's see if I can move this where everybody can see it. What is that? It shows the. Uh, I'm not sure what radio that is. Two-way power source. Recommended installation. So, it shows here. It'll run 100, 117, and 230 volts. Which would not be 240 US. These are single phase. Hmm. So you you could run a, an all twelve volt station with this, basically. Okay. Two KL. They're showing the IC seven twenty radio. I wonder how old this thing is. So that's a 720A radio in that picture. Um, I I can't remember how old is the 720. Now, see, I think I owned a 720, but maybe it was a 730, and it had some problems with it. It had that really weird microphone too. Um, and I ended up trying to work on it, and I had. Plugged some stuff into the wrong spot and it popped. The 720 IC2KL. So they're using like accessory wires from the radio to this to that. Yeah. So then it shows the 730. To the AT100. Oh, why, why are they showing that? I wonder. Note, when using the 730 and making its auto band switching function with the IC8 T100, the LDA unit must be installed inside the IC730. Interesting. This manual... Oh, this manual is for both tuners, that's why. Okay, I see. I'm like, eh, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so here we go right here. So, it shows you. 
that um, antenna 4 will be 160, antenna 3 will be 80, antenna 2 will be 7 through 10 megahertz, and antenna 1 will be 14, 21, and 28. So, when using the transceiver other than, uh, what does it say here, other than ICOM, the auto band switching function does not work. In this case, set the switch uh, of the tuner to the same band as the transceiver manually. The control cable is not needed for this connection. The tuner is provided with four terminals connected at the following time of shipment. Changing the antenna... When you wish to use connectors other than the original one, the connections can be changed by changing the internal wiring according to your antenna. Follow the steps below. Okay, so interestingly that they would allow that. You know, nowadays you never see anything like that. So anyway, I decided to go through this really quick and just kind of show you guys this thing. It's pretty cool. Um, there's some calibration that could be done. The auto and the preset, so definitely a nice tuner.